Hi guys, my name is Chris Nicholas. I'm a farrier from Washington State. We're gonna go through the process of casting on a wood shoe. So we got our foot trimmed, prepped, mapped, and we're just gonna go ahead and trace the foot on here. And what this helps me do is helps me know where the hoof wall is going to be. Looking at our foot here and how thick our hoof wall is on both sides. So now that lets me know where I can place my set screw safely into the hoof wall. It's roughly a quarter inch thick. I'm just going just under a quarter inch with my marks here for my, for my hole that I'm gonna drill. One of the things that makes this successful is having all your prep work done in, in the, before you start. So we've got two different types of casts today. We've got a two inch and a three inch. We're gonna use the two inch today. We're going to have our shoe already prepped, ready to go. For our packing, we've got soft dim. We've got some arty mud. The glue we're gonna use is Hoof Life. It's a methyl methacrylate glue, and uh, it works well with uh, this type of casting material. Some stretch wrap, some gloves. If you're in a wet area, you're gonna want a little heat gun to dry out the foot and a moisture meter. A drill and an impact gun. Have a wire wheel, countersink bit, and today we're using an inch and a quarter inch screw. So I've marked where our screw needs to go through, where it safely goes in the wall, and I'm gonna, drew, I'm gonna drill from the bottom down so I can then come back with the countersink bit. So now I'm gonna check the length of my screw, see if I like it, if it's gonna have enough attachment. And it does, that's enough to hold the screw. Yep. So we're gonna uh, fill the back of the shoe with dental impression material and use this as the impression plate all in one step. So I'm going to use just a little field paste. You can use anything that glue or anything isn't going to stick to. Um, Vaseline, little moisture, however that bit. This is just what I have handy. All right, so we're going to use dental impression in the back of the foot, and we're going to use magic cushion in the front half of the foot. And with dental impression, it's a 50-50 two-part, so equal portions, something like so. We're going to put a little bit of arty mud in the commissures and the central sulcus just to help combat bacteria through this process as the shoe's on this horse. So we have created a pressure plate. This is just going to set up.
we can now make sure that we don't have any extra pressure on the sole here shaving off all right and then Here we are using magic cushion, and uh, this will help harden the sole. Prep the hoof wall for glue. So we're gonna use the corner of our rasp and scratch the hoof wall and put some big grooves in it for the glue to anchor into. And you don't have to go too far up the hoof wall on this. That will be sufficient for today. So if you're in a wet environment, it's extremely important to have the foot dry. So little butane torch, you, you don't need to spend a lot of time, you're just trying to dry the surface area. This foot's in a very dry climate, so we don't have to spend a lot of time drying it. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna mix up some dim, and we're gonna create a dim dam for the back of the foot. And what we've learned over the past years of casting is that we wanna follow the contour of the heels and the heel bulb, and also, to, so we don't pinch the heels, bring some of the dim dam around the back of the heels on both sides. So to start with, pl placing some material in the back here and following the contour of the heels. And it's okay if it gets a little high, we always can come back and trim it. Then I'm gonna create a dim dam through the heel here. So today we're going to use uh, just a two ounce cup of Hoof Life. You can also use Equilox. If you have a tube, it's about three and a half squeezes out of your tube into a little Dixie cup. So but I can let this sit here like so before I mix it for a little bit and I'll make sure I have everything ready. So I'll have my casting material, stretch wrap. If it's a hot day, cold water is fine. If it's, a hot, uh, if it's cold, you're gonna want a little bit warmer water to help set it up. So we're, we're ready to go through the process. And so once we start this, we have to move efficiently quickly. So that's why we wanna have uh, everything ready to go. So I use about half my glue in this cup, um, or maybe just a little bit over. Um, some to finish the casting is after it's wrapped on, 
and some to help it bond to the hoof wall as I'm putting it on the foot. So I'm going to run the glue about halfway up the hoof wall, maybe just a tiny bit past that. And I'm also going to run it down onto the wood to help my cast adhere to this. We've etched the hoof wall so the glue can anchor into it. All right. With this process, this uh, can stay on a horse for quite a long period of time. If you don't have it, a bucket of water handy, you can just fill this with water and that can be your bucket. I kind of wait for the air bubbles to stop going. So it's maybe about 10 seconds. Wait till it's fully activated. I don't wring all the water out. I just give a little squeeze. The water is part of what activates the resin and is your glue. So when I place this on the foot, I anchor it with my thumb and start rolling it around the heel. I'm not stretching it, I'm just rolling it. I'm gonna start going around the shoe, kind of as a horizontal plane, gently around the heel and then start creeping up my hoof wall. <sighs> Hang on, this we go. And then I'm, as I've done that, now I'm gonna start coming back down my hoof wall. And you can trim and file this if you have excess. There will be a slightly different application if we are doing an EVA foam. And we'll go over that in another video. So here's my tab. Sometimes there's a double little exposure. I open this up, I grab my glue, hold it with my toes. And this set up really fast today, it's kind of warm. So in this situation, my glue didn't last, so we won't worry about it. It's still gonna anchor. Grab your stretch wrap, do a little run. Just hold the knee and help them just gently place this foot on the ground. One of the things that will start happening is you'll see little air bubbles and moisture coming out. And that's a normal process. You can see the air bubbles up here bubbling. And that is the reaction of the water mixing with the cast and creating the resin. That's a glue process. So you don't want to wring too much moisture out because that's part of the glue that helps harden this together. So one of the tools we all have as a fairy is a rasp and I find this tool works really well for moving stretch wrap. So I just file right through it like so. And voila. So one of the things that after we're done casting, sometimes the material gets built up and in this position it's built up on the heel. So I just want to soften this heel on the landing. What can often happen if we don't file this down, it'll wear the toe and this will not wear and it'll start wearing in an excessive wedge. So I use my nippers at first just because this is fiberglass and the less, least amount of filing I get have to do, the better. So I just do a run my nippers around. 
Maybe I'll soften it a little bit with my nippers back here and do my final dressing with my rasp. And this is a important note to take, take home. And you also notice that I'm pulling my rasp into the shoe and not pulling it away. That'll have a tendency when the cast is still wet to maybe pull it off the shoe prematurely. So for this casting demonstration, this horse does not need a wood clog or a cast on. She's just been a willing participant. And uh, we're going to take the shoe right off now so I can show you how to do the shoe removal. One of the simplest ways of going about it is just going right into the back here and cutting your cast material right through the back. You can now peel it this side and this side and pull it away and then using my stand I'm able to use it a little bit of a pry bar I've got this far now I'll bring the foot forward And there's your cast removal. So now we can remove our set screws and pop off our shoe package. If for some reason putting a screw into the hoof wall is not an option, there's another way and we can go over that technique later.